going. Awesome. She's the one that uh, started this or inspired this tutorial. So today, we'll give you a little backstory. Uh, Melissa has been going hound on sewing underwear. And I think, correct me wrong, she sewed like seven pairs in a couple days um, after she received her kits. And one of the questions that she had was a clean way to finish fold over elastic. Um, particularly, I think it was on her panties. Yes, it was on her panties. Um, I have a little trick for finishing fold over elastic that gives a really clean finish that I wanted to show you. So I have a Maris panty cut out here. I haven't attached the leg holes. I've sewn the diagonal seams and I'm going to get started on sewing um, the fold over elastic. So first things first is I'm going to flip this to the wrong side. So you start on the wrong side and then finish so the first pass and then flip it to the right side. Um, I like to start, excuse my, um, if this is vulgar to anybody, I like to start like mid butt cheek uh, when sewing the fold of elastic. I don't like to start on the front because that is the most visible place. So if you see here, this is like where it curves into the thong um, and that's where I'm going to start. So let's just give a little um, tutorial. So fold over elastic is a type of elastic, it's different than Pico in that it has an indentation right down the center. And this is where you, it makes it really easy to fold over. And please excuse the glue that's still on my finger. Sorry, it gets everywhere. Um, but we are going to sew on the plush side. This is the plush side, which should be against your body on the finished piece. And this is the shiny side. So this should be facing outwards on the finished piece. So with the wrong side of the panty face up and then the plush side um, and the shiny side face up as well. I am going to sew it with a zigzag stitch. Now a question that I get a lot is what is the width of the zigzag stitch I should be using or that you should be using? So it's gonna vary from machine to machine. Um, even the fact that we have here at the studio is different with every machine. So a good way to kind of learn your stitch widths is to have some of your ready to wear lingerie on hand and just compare and contrast the two. Um, for this one, you definitely don't want it to be more than half this width of the elastic or half the width of the fold over elastic. Okay, so I'm going to start sewing with a zigzag stitch. Um, another question I get is how much should I stretch the elastic when sewing? So elastic stretches out when you sew it. So you want to give it a little bit of tension in order to compensate for it. Um, how much tension is going, to, is going to depend on the type of elastic that you're using, the type of fabric they're using. I know a lot of sewists like to, they want to pre-cut their elastics according to the length of the opening. I do not do that because there are a lot of variables when sewing elastic. So what I do is I, if you see here, I just give it a little bit of a tug and then I actually press it down and then I'll keep sewing. And I would rather you stretch it more than not stretch it enough because on body, it'll stretch out. But once it's already been stretched out, it's gonna be stretched out even when you wear it. You can also see that my zigzag stitch is super close to that one edge. So I am approaching the beginning. I'm just gonna clip. Here is my little trick. So I'm gonna overlap these elastics about a half of an inch, give or take an eighth of an inch. Then I'm going to put my needle down. 
I'm going to switch to a straight stitch and then I'm going to reduce the stitch length to 1.5. I'm going to bring my press foot up. I'm going to pivot. And then I'm going to sew back and forth. Then I'm going to clip my thread tails. And then I'm going to trim. Hard to do it with like two fingers right now. But I'm going to trim really close to that straight stitch. And that straight stitch is essentially finishing off those edges. Like that, really close. Then when you fold it back, and I can probably get a little bit closer, it's just really hard to do it with two cameras like right in your face right now. Um, okay. I'm also gonna apply this fabric fusion after I'm done, can it get under there? Yeah, separate fusion. Um, after I'm finished, and it will prevent it from fraying even more. So, so the second pass, you see, I have a little bit back here. I still have fold over elastic here, this little tail. So I'm going to cut this at an angle. Then when I fold it over, see how nice and clean that is? And it'll be even cleaner when you add a little bit of that fabric fusion. Now I flip the panty right side out. And so the second pass. Now, what I didn't show on camera, um, you'll just continue to sew the second pass all the way around. What I didn't show on camera, and I'm not going to, um, let me just switch back to my big dad suit. Um, so you'll just continue to sew with a big dad suit. That's something that I didn't do, but I need to do. I'm not gonna show on camera. So you'll just, You'll just continue this all the way around the zigzag stitch um, and overlap the zigzag stitch. Um, something that I didn't show is that I need to, before I do this pass, trim my seam allowances. I got pretty close, but like right here, I need to trim this. Um, I mean, I also need to trim this right here. Um, where the crotch lining is or the gusset, it's just really bulky. Um, but that's my little trick for finishing off fold over elastic um, and making it really nice and clean. Hello, uh, let's see what questions. The fab has a top and bottom feeder, which makes easier to sew. Ba, ba, ba. Let's see what questions we have. This is a lifesaver. I know, total lifesaver. I love the walk, walking foot in this machine. What's the name of this machine? So I'm sewing on a creative icon and all FAF machines have a built-in walking foot. It's called their IDT um, system. Uh, I have a blog post on a ton of blog posts on FAF machines and pretty much every single one of them, I call out their IDT. So if you wanna learn more about that, definitely head over to the blog and read those blog posts. And ba, ba, ba. let's see, what other questions? I don't think I have any other questions. 
which means if I don't have any questions, that means you understood all of it. Um, cool, cool, cool. Awesome. So basically you sew the zigzag stitches all the way in the round. You switch to a straight stitch. You use that straight stitch to stitch the width of the fold over elastic. You trim it really close to the stitching and then that kind of finishes it off and prevents it from fraying. Um, so that's the, I, that's the tutorial. If you're watching this and you're wondering, hey, is this gonna be posted somewhere afterwards? It will be on IGTV as well as YouTube. So when you go to sew your panties or your bralettes or your bodysuits and you're like, hey, I remember, I need, where does that post it? Um, always check out my IGTV and YouTube for uh, the tutorials. Um, so I hope you enjoyed it. And until, ooh, do you stretch the elastic? I just got a question. Do you stretch the elastic on the second pass? You stretch it the same as you did on the first pass. Um, I have a uh, video tutorial on how much tension should you apply to elastic when sewing. Um, so I, ch I would definitely check out that um, tutorial. Are you using an overlock? Um, I'm using a sewing machine. An overlock, it's, no. I'm not using an overlock machine. Um, so thanks for joining it. And I will see you until the next uh, tutorial.